Now, this is not a Christian doctrine because Paul taught that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. Paul did not indicate that when we die, we go into a soul unconscious sleep. We go straight to be with Jesus. So, because Paul didn't say something, then it is considered not a Christian teaching. Now, I don't know, is Paul the Christ or is it Jesus who's the Christ? The patriarch David, God's best friend, why is he not with the Lord? Because right now he is absent from the body. Why isn't it in heaven? My friend, please tell Satan to get out of you, okay, my friend, or to get behind you. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to DC Dupenville TV, and we are back today. We're gonna to talk about Vlad Savchuk about a video read about Adventism or oh, Seventh-day Adventism. If it's the first time, mm, take a moment and hit that subscribe button below right here and hit that like button and that notification bell as well. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about what he said. Now, let's get active without any more delay. Let's go. I'm going to focus on the five doctrines that are different from evangelical Christianity. The first one is the prophetic ministry of Ellen G. White. SDA Church believes that the scripture testify that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is prophecy and that this gift is an identifying mark of the remnant church and they believe that it was manifested in the ministry of Ellen G. White. Her writings speak with prophetic authority and provide comfort, guidance, instruction, and correction to the church. They also make it clear that the Bible is the standard by which all teaching and experience must be tested. But this is a major problem because SDA puts this Ellen White's writings on the par with the Bible. Evangelical Christians even, and especially Pentecostal charismatic churches, reject putting any prophecy on the same level as the Bible. The second doc Okay, so to everyone listening, Seventh-day Adventists or not, I want you to listen carefully. Um, to mostly to those that are non-Seventh-day Adventists. As, as a Seventh-day Adventist, I grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist home and then I got baptized in the Adventist church. I can tell you even myself included, her books, her writing, I started reading her writing when I was in college. Most Seventh-day Adventists do not read her writing like that. I think they should. I think we should read her read more. And right now, I'm actually reading the book of called Acts of Apostles. And so, most Adventists do not read her writing like you guys think that's number one number two we do not put her writings about the bible either number three what we do believe is the same holy spirit who inspired moses abraham isaac jacob judah joseph um, joshua <laughs> esther Dave, Solomon, you name it, Matthew, Mark, Daniel, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Obadiah, Malachi, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, Peter. This is the same Holy Spirit who inspired her writings. That we know for certain, but we do not put her writings on the same level as the Bible. Get that out of your head, people. All of you non Seventh day Adventists, please get that out of your head. We do not put her writings on the same level as the Bible. Most of us do not read her writings. Remember that. Let's move on. Doctrine, and that is keeping the law as found in the Ten Commandments. SDA believes that the basis of God's covenant with His people is the Ten Commandments, highlighted by the Holy Spirit to reveal sin and the need for a Savior. Salvation is by grace, not by works, 
and it results in obedience to the Ten Commandments. Now, evangelical Christians, however, believe that Christians fulfill the law through Christ living within them, not by legalistic adherence. They point to the fact that Jesus rose on Sunday, which they refer to as the Lord's Day, and that early Christians met on Sundays for worship and fellowship, Acts chapter 20, verse 7, and 1 Corinthians 16:2. We believe that Paul taught against observing special days, including the Sabbath, Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Now, Seventh-day Adventists emphasize Sabbath keeping, asserting that it was mandated by the fourth commandment and was the original practice of the Jerusalem church. Now, they argue that Constantine changed the day of worship to Sunday in 321 AD. However, evangelicals note that Paul opposed Judaizers who insisted on Jewish customs like Sabbath keeping and wrote the book of Galatians against such practices. In fact, Paul stated that following the law, including the circumcision and Sabbath keeping, was a return to slavery and contrary to the freedom in Christ. Read Galatians chapter 5 verses 1 through 4. Early Christians, like just Martyr, also indicated that they did not observe the Sabbath as Jews did, supporting evangelical stance. Third doctrine where there. All right, Vlad. Um, yes, there was a time when the so called Christians didn't you know, observe the Sabbath like the Jews. You know why? Because they wanted, they wanted to distance themselves from the true Sabbath. So they have a false Sabbath called Sunday versus the true Sabbath. That way, those who kept the seventh day Sabbath could be persecuted. That's easy. Even in the future, we'll have the same issue. Whether if you, are you going to keep Sunday or are you going to keep the Lord's Day, the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath. That way, they can for sure know who is worshiping on the seventh day of the week or the Sabbath. Or on Sunday, therefore, persecution can be made much easier. But let me tell you something else, my friend. Um, you talk about. Um, do you remember that James said in chapter two that we will be judged by the law of liberty? That's called the Ten Commandments. Now, the Sabbath. Very interestingly, you mentioned. Colossians chapter 2 verse 16, which has nothing to do with the seventh day Sabbath. Yes, Paul mentioned about the Sabbath, plural, Sabbaths. There was, if you go back to Luke chapter 23, you're going to find out there is one, something called the Sabbath day. And there was a list called the Sabbath days or Sabbaths, plural, meaning day of atonement. First, the Feast of the Trumpet, the Passover, the Feast of the Tabernacle, the Feast of the First Fruit. Those things were a representation to Christ. The Sabbath day was there before God even, God even gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. Because remember in the wilderness, in chapter what, 16, 17 of Exodus, God says, Six days, I'm going to make it rain for you. But on the seventh day, there will be no manna because it is the Sabbath of the Lord. You see, the first commandment said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the day of the Lord, not of the Jews, the Lord, thy God. Now, is he your God? Maybe not, but he is my God. So I'm going to obey his Sabbath. But let's move on because I, I don't want to go too deep in everything else because it will make it very long for today, but not today. All right, guys, let's move on. There is disagreement, cessation of existence at physical death. SDA Church believes that the wages of sin is death, but God, who alone is immortal, will grant eternal life to his redeemed. Until that day, death is an unconscious state for all people. When Christ, who is our life, appears, the resurrected righteous and the living righteous will be glorified and cut up to meet the Lord. The second resurrection, the resurrection of the unrighteous, will take a place after 1,000 years. 
Now, this is not a Christian doctrine because Paul taught that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. Paul did not indicate that when we die, we go into a soul unconscious sleep. We go straight to be with Jesus. The fourth doctrine where there Okay, this is very disturbing and I'm very disappointed to hear he said such satanic, not satanic, falsehood like this. Um, so, it is not a Christian doctrine because Paul didn't say that. Wow. So, because Paul didn't say something, then it is considered not a Christian teaching. Now, I don't know, is Paul the Christ or is it Jesus who's the Christ? Because if you remember in John chapter 11, when he said that Lazarus is asleep, <laughs> the greatest teacher said Lazarus is sleeping. He said, well, Lord, if he's sleeping, he'll be well. Okay, Lazarus is dead and I have to go wake him up. And if it is true, when you're absent from the body, when you're already in Christ, that means once you die, you go straight to heaven. Why didn't Jesus call Lazarus from heaven? Why did he call him from the tomb? Vlad, can you tell me, please? Oh, moreover, in Acts chapter 2, very Acts chapter 2, when Peter said the patriarch David, for some reason, he is the man after God's own heart, God's best friend, best friend, David. Why is he not with the Lord? Because right now he is absent from the body. Why isn't he in heaven with the Lord? Why is he still in the tube? My friend, please do not oh, tell Satan to get out of you, okay, my friend, or to get behind you. Because Satan definitely blinded you on that part. First thing first, you mentioned because Paul didn't preach something that means it is not a Christian doctrine. That is, that is, that is Peter telling Jesus, no, you you will not die. What did, Peter, what did you tell to Peter? Get the behind me, Satan. Tell Satan to get behind you, my friend, because right now, Satan is speaking through you. That is for sure. But let's move on. And remember, Paul is not the Christ. Jesus is. Let's move on. There is disagreement is no earthly millennium. According to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the millennium is 1,000-year reign of Christ with His saints in heaven between the first and the second resurrections. During this time, the wicked man will be judged and the earth will be utterly desolate without living human inhabitants, but occupied by Satan and his angels. At its close, Christ with His saints and the holy city will descend from heaven on earth. The unrighteous dead will then be resurrected and with Satan and his angels will surround the city, but fire from God will consume them and cleanse the earth. Thus the universe will be freed from sin and sinners forever. The book of Revelation teaches us that the millennial reign of Jesus will be physical on the planet earth, not in heaven. The fifth doctrine. Can you please provide me any biblical text for that? Because I mean, you give me biblical text for everything but that one. Actually, you give a bunch of false biblical texts, most of the most of them, mis taking those verses out of context and making something with it. But this one is even the worst one because you didn't even give it biblical text. Let me tell you something, my friend. Since you, since you worship Paul so much, because you know, if it didn't come from Paul, it's not Christian doctrine, Paul said, when Jesus Christ comes, the dead in Christ will rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be cut up to him in the air, and so we shall be with the Lord. Now, the Bible does teach that Jesus, on the second time he comes, is not going to touch the earth. If we are not going to, if it is not going to touch the earth, how could we be on earth 
for a thousand years. Do you remember? Do you remember when the Bible says that Jesus said, "In the last days there shall be two on the house top; one shall be taken and the other one left. Two in the field; one shall be taken and the other one left." And the disciples said, "Where are two, Lord?" Meaning, where are they left? But Jesus said, "Wherever their carcasses are, there shall be the vultures." Meaning, the vultures are be are going to be eating the dead bodies, the wicked. They won't be buried; they'll be eaten by the birds. Bible says in chapter twenty of Revelation, Revelation, that an angel came down from heaven. Having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain, and he laid hold of the dragon and tied him up, and he put him bound on the earth for a thousand years, and he cast him in there, that he would not deceive the world any more, or the nations any more. If Satan is not going to deceive the nations any more, that means there is nobody here to deceive. There's nobody here to deceive. Remember, the earth is desolate because Peter said in Second Peter chapter three, verse nine and ten, the Lord is not slack concerning His appearance, but He wants everyone to come to repentance. And it goes on to say, but the day of the Lord will be like a thief in the night, where the where the where the heaven will pass away, and the element of the earth will burn with fervent heat. That means there's nobody on the earth right now. When we go to heaven, when we go, when we go to, to the air, to meet Jesus in the air, we are not coming back to the earth until the thousand years is over. Because Satan will be by himself for a th- with his minions for a thousand years. We won't be here. Now imagine this. Imagine we are here on earth for a thousand years rejoicing, looking at Satan in his distress. How happy is that going to be? Please don't misquote the Bible. Don't make it say whatever you want it to say. Okay? Just remember that. But guys, I'm going to stop it right here. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button below and that notification bell. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm going to stop right here. It was the Prepare TV. I hope to see you guys again. Until then. Bye for now.